What's up guys, Parker here. I have an awesome video today showing you how to list items in a table. Uh, so this is a very interesting method that's a little bit hard to understand without an example. So you see in this first table, this is how a normal table in Power BI works. Uh, you throw in two columns and it shows you each record for your table and the you know second column that I'm showing is status. So it's showing ticket ID 101 is in progress, ticket 108 is assigned, but I wanna show it in a way that allows me to list the tickets that fall into a certain category. So if you see my example on the right, you see all the tickets that fall into the new category, the assigned category, and the in progress category. So this is very different than how Power BI works out of the box, but I can walk you through the process to be able to list your items down uh, down the rows, but also allow you to show you know these values within the same row. So you have actually have a ticket 121 in the first row, a ticket 108 in the first row, and also a ticket 101 in that first row. So it's going to expand as long as you have tickets in uh, like your max category. So the assigned category has around 15 tickets. So my matrix expands down 15 rows. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to set this up. This is really cool, a really cool workaround. So I will bring you over to a blank file and just show you my data. So it's just, uh, I have 26 IT tickets here with a date created, a status, and a department. So there are three statuses. There's new, assigned, and in progress. So new means it has not been assigned or worked on. Assigned means it's been assigned but has not been worked on. And in progress means it's currently being worked. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a dynamic ranking. And I have a video on this um, on how to use the rank X function, but we're going to uh, go ahead and call this the uh, ticket ranking. And we're going to start by creating a variable that grabs the status of our ticket because we want to rank depending on the status. So we are going to type in max of our status column. And we're just going to return a normal rank X, but specifically filtering our table, which is called tickets. So we're filtering all selected of our tickets, specifically to where the status equals our current status, so that we start the ranking over every time for each status. And I'll show you what that looks like when we finish this up here. Um, next, I am going to uh, rank based on our ticket ID. So we are going to calculate max ticket ID. And then finally, we are going to sort by ascending. And that wraps up our rank X function. So we are filtering our tickets down to just showing us uh, a single status. And then we're uh, ranking based on the max of our ticket ID. So if we throw that into a table, we can see what that ranking actually does. So I will use a normal table and we'll throw in ticket ID, status, and ticket ranking. And we need to not summarize our ticket ID and then that's what it should look like. So you see ticket 101 is in progress and that gives a ticket ranking of one all the way through seven and then it starts over at one for the new category of assigned, and then it'll start over at one for the new category of new. So that's exactly what we want for a ranking. Uh, next, we need to create a ne another measure to be able to show items uh, down rows like we did in our previous example. But um, I'm gonna kinda show you some of the pitfalls with a method like this. Um, you can't do this out of the box, so if we go ahead and make a new matrix, you can think about how you would solve this problem and it's very difficult if you don't have the right thinking. So first, uh, first thing I would try is to throw in the ticket ID in the rows and then maybe the status in the columns, but then I don't have anything to throw in the values. Let's say I threw in count of status, or actually at this point I would throw in ticket ID in the values, but it doesn't really make much sense. It just shows you, you know, the count of the ticket IDs in that status. Um, you can look around and see that there's really not many other options you can do. So I'm just gonna skip to the part where I show you how to do this, and that is by creating a new table. And this new table is just going to have a range of numbers. Um, I know I only have 26 tickets, so I don't need that big of a range. So I'm just going to make 
a, uh, a series of numbers using the generate series function from one to 100, so just 100 numbers. And instead, I'm going to throw that in my rows, that value. And let me see what I got going on here. So there's no relationship, so if I just go ahead and get rid of the other two, you see now I have just one column of values in my rows. And then we're going to create one new measure. And we're going to call this uh, tickets by status. And the purpose of this measure is it is going to take our random number that we have here on the side. Let's say for the first row it takes the number one. And it is going to return the ticket ID that has a ranking of one. Um, so if we were to imagine our ranking table, actually I'm just going to create that again. So I'm just going to make that same table we had made that had the rankings. So it was ticket ID, status, and ticket ranking. And if we don't summarize, so this table right here, so this ticket ID 101 has a ranking of one. So I want to show ticket ID 101 right here and then get the next ranking of one, ticket 108, and show that here with the columns. So we will create one new measure. We are going to call this uh, tickets by status. And we're going to set that equal to a couple variables. We're going to create a variable called current row. This is going to be our row that we're currently in in the matrix. So um, we threw in the value field from the range table. So we're taking the max of the range value. So when we're on the first row, this is going to return a one. When we're on the sixth row, this is going to return a six. Next, we are going to create a uh, virtual table, which I'm just going to call virtual. And we do this, and I've, I've shown you how to do this in a couple videos, uh, but it's an extremely handy tip. Uh, you use the summarize function. Summarize is going to evaluate a table and add columns depending on certain expressions um, that, you've, uh, that you write. So we are going to summarize our tickets table because that's really our only table of interest. We are going to group by our ticket ID. And nextly, we are going to create a column called ranking. And we are going to create it based on our ranking measure. So what this summarize table is actually doing is it's summarizing the tickets table, categorizing or grouping based on the ticket ID, and each ticket ID is now going to have a ranking value. So it's going to evaluate this measure each uh, for each ticket ID. So we are then going to return, uh, we now want to return the max x, uh, and in order to, um, in order to reference this ranking column or any column of a virtual table, you have to use a uh, x function because it needs to iterate over that virtual table. So we are going to filter our uh, virtual table for where our ranking column equals our current row. And this makes sense because we only want to show the records that actually have the same uh, row value as our ranking. And then finally, we return the ticket ID. We'll go over this one more time. Ticket by status is already used. I will call this ticket by status measure because I had already created the other measure that I will delete. Ticket by status, yep, I need to delete that. So I have my ticket by status measure so it is returning that max x and then pretty much all i need to do now is throw in ticket by status in the values and our uh, status in the columns and there we go that's exactly how it should look so you see that i have this value column on the left that is just acting as a placeholder to get some sort of i guess for lack of better terms row context and once you are able to grab this value then you can pair it with uh, the ranking for each category. So we are able to get the first ranking for the assigned column, which is 108, as you can see in this table below, or the fourth value for in progress is uh, ticket 104. 
So we're almost where we want to be. I'm going to go ahead and delete this table. Finally, a couple of tips we can do. I'm going to go ahead and make the text size larger because uh, so that we can see it better. Um, so a couple of tips on how we want to make this look totally perfect is firstly, we don't want to show this value here on the left. Here, let me try to grab this table and move it up a little bit. There we go. Um, so we don't really want to show this value here on the left, but you see it'll wrap like that, and that's not what we really want. So we are going to change a couple settings here. Row headers, we want to turn word wrap off. Column headers, we want to do the same. And then finally, the exact same thing with values. And then we're able to hide this value column totally perfectly. We can just hide that over to the left, and then we just have our uh, our items here. We can also turn off subtotals because they don't make sense here. We'll turn off the row subtotals and column subtotals. So now we just have our table of assigned, in progress, and new. And then the final thing we want to do is we want to show this in a specific order. We want to show tickets in the order of new and then assigned and then in progress because that's how they would come in. They would come in, they would be new, they would be assigned, and they would switch to assigned, and then they would become in progress when they started work. So finally, we are going to have to do that in Power Query. So we can just create a new column. We'll go to Add Column, Column from Examples, since I'm lazy. We'll call this Column Sort Order. And we will just give some examples here. So new is one. And assigned, we can just give an example of two and in progress is three. We can give another example and now it picks up on what it should do. So in progress is all threes, assigns are all twos, and news are all ones. So let's go ahead and click OK. And we have our new column here. We'll t uh, make it a whole number. And then finally we will close and apply. Awesome. So we can go over to our table and we can click on the status column and go to modeling and sort by sort order. So now our status is gonna sort based on the sort order. And we see now we have our matrix in the new assigned in progress order. And this is totally dynamic for the different departments. So I showed you at one point, I have different departments here. So the finance, sales, and customer care departments. So this is dynamic. So if we click on customer care, these are only the new and assigned uh, in, in progress tickets that are relevant to that department. So um, just as a final note, I'm going to take you back to the original, um, the original file here. So just to kind of nail um, the idea in your head, uh, tables by default will show things um, down the rows. So for each ticket ID, we're showing a status. But in our example, we're able to show the ticket IDs um, based on the status in multiple columns in list format on the same row. A lot of information there, but um, it's a really cool idea to allow you to list a lot of uh, data. This could be either numerical or text data, depending on what you want. It takes a little while to get there, but it is a pretty cool dynamic solution that allows you to only show relevant data um, across multiple columns. So I hope you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.